Hey team, it's Dr. George here and today in Victoria we saw a loosening of the lockdown restrictions. Now this has happened across Australia and the reason we've been able to do this is because we've successfully been able to suppress the amount of virus within our community. However, the virus is still transmitted the exact same way. That's through viral particles on surfaces being picked up with the hands and brought to the face or via being in intimate contact with other people. That is being in close proximity where you're able to breathe the same air. Now, when we look at other countries where they have had a loosening of the lockdown laws, we've also seen increases in viruses as well. Let's look at Germany, South Korea, Singapore, Japan and America. There have been spikes after the loosening of lockdowns. This is why it is so, so important that we maintain social distancing, that we maintain hand washing. And if you have any symptoms, you must isolate and you must get tested. The more testing we can do, the more we can get on top of that. Even things like the COVID Safe app are useful because if somebody does get an infection, we can find people that may have been in close intimate contact with them. Within the LGBTI community, we've all been in lockdown and we are craving intimacy. I understand this. However, we need to be aware that intimacy is how the virus is passed. Intimacy can be as simple as a handshake or a hug, as we remember from a lot of the press on Mother's Day. So how do we manage this? Now let's look at two examples. On one side, we have a couple that are from a COVID perspective monogamous. They've been in lockdown together. They've not been leaving the house. This couple can happily have sex and the chances of them becoming infected are very low. And if one of them was to become infected, they will be able to let each other know very, very quickly. Let's look on the other side. Say, for example, you were, you were to attend a sex on premise venue. If you were to enjoy the intimate space of say a steam room where you can easily fit in 20, 30, 40 people into a space that's as small as 10 to 20 square meters with a lot of physical touching and very little, very little social distancing, as you can imagine, that is the perfect situation for transmission with people moving around the space. Transmissions are not only likely, but almost impossible to avoid. So where does intimacy come in on this? And one idea that I quite like is the idea of a bubble. Of course, we know and we've been saying that sex is, you know, if you can limit the amount of sexual partners that you have, this will make a big difference. And this is where the bubble would come in. Within your bubble, you have a group of people that you are choosing to be intimate only with them. And you have to have really clear communication within that bubble. And that's important for many reasons. One is if they bring other people into the bubble. So they've had sex with somebody outside of your bubble. Guess what? They're part of your bubble now. So you need to be able to communicate this and make decisions on what you are willing and not willing to risk for yourself. The other thing is that if somebody within your group of people was to get sick, you can all immediately let each other know, get tested, get isolated and work out whether or not you've had a potential exposure to the virus. I understand that not everybody has the ability to have that bubble. Now, the decision is yours. You have to be able to tolerate a level of risk that you're willing to tolerate. However, at the very least, please have something like the COVID safe app. So if you were to meet somebody and it's difficult to contact them again, at the very least, if you both had the app running, there is a chance that you will get notified. I suppose most importantly though, is if you develop symptoms, that is a sore throat, a cough, difficulty breathing, headaches, 
fevers, muscle aches and pains, even diarrhea. These are all potential symptoms of a COVID infection. Do get tested straight away. Even if you've been tested before and it's negative, get tested again and stay in isolation until you have those results. That way you can minimize potential spread of the virus and we can minimize an upshoot of infections after we've had such great success. The other keys are going to be we need to maintain social distancing, keeping apart 1.5 to 2 meters away from each other. We need to maintain hand washing. This is important. Anytime your hands are heading towards your face, wash them. Before you eat, wash them. After you've been to the bathroom, wash them. And after you've been out and about in the world, wash your hands, or at the very least, sanitize your hands with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. It's not perfect, but negotiating the next couple of months is going to be the key to our success in really stopping a huge second wave. And that's the thing that we really want to avoid. Look after yourself, look after your friends, wash your hands, socially distance, and if you're feeling unwell, please get tested. I know that this is a heavy thing to talk about, but it's important that we do talk about this. If you have any questions, please place them below and I'll do my best to get an answer to you. Look after yourself, team. Have a wonderful day. Stay healthy.